JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones and in the news. St. Elizabeth Principal hospitalized after being chopped in front of teachers and students. A St. Elizabeth Primary School principal has been hospitalized after a machete wielding man said to be of unsound mind chopped her in front of students and teachers on Friday afternoon. Reports are that students and teachers at retirement primary in Magotti were sent scampering shortly after 2 p.m. when the man attacked the principal after he visited the school to make a complaint to her about being teased by some students. Chairman of the school board, Herman Samuels, said that students have been left traumatized after witnessing the ordeal. He chopped the principal. I don't know how many chops she got, but I understand that she got one in her forehead. It was in front of the students and teachers. The students are very traumatized. I understand that one student even fainted when she saw the blood, he said. When asked if the man is related to any of the students at the school, Samuel said the man is from the area. He is not a parent. He lives possibly close to the school, Samuel said. The man, who later surrendered to the police, filed a report that he was attacked by the principal with a machete and during the incident, both of them were hurt. The man reportedly had swellings on his shoulder and back. Car thief napped after visiting cronies in stolen Axial. A man, the Clarendon police believed to be a part of a major car stealing ring in the parish, was arrested last week when he turned up to visit two of his jailed cronies at the Lionel Town police station in a stolen motor car. The man, whose identity has been withheld as he has not yet been formally charged, turned up at the police station during visiting hours on Sunday, October 16. He was driving a 2015 Toyota Axial motor car. Just two days prior, two men were busted at the Maypen police station for trying to sell another stolen Toyota Axe motor car. Believing the coincidence to be too great, the suspicion of the police on duty was immediately aroused. Checks were made and it was discovered that the motor vehicle was registered to one of the jailed men. The police probed further and called in the JCF's serial number restoration expert. It was then discovered that the vehicle's chassis number and engine number had been tampered with and that the vehicle had been stolen in another parish. He was subsequently arrested and placed in custody. His cronies, 38-year-old Kemar Meeks and 30-year-old Tyron Smith, both of Evans Street in Maple and Clarendon, have since been charged with fraudulent use of registration plate, uttering forged documents and forgery. They are waiting a day to answer to their charges in the Maple Parish Court. It is alleged that after advertising a stolen motor car for sale on social media, they met the prospective bar at the Maypen police station on Friday, October 14, to conduct the sale. However, the prospective bar sought the assistance of the police to verify the corporate communications unit vehicle documents, and it was then discovered that the Toyota Axe motor car bore a registration plate that was not assigned to it, and it had been reported stolen in the halfway tree area. The police are using these latest incidents to remind individuals of the importance of being vigilant when purchasing motor vehicles. The police are able to assist with the verification process and the people are encouraged to contact their local police for assistance. Body of woman found in bushes in St. Mary. The St. Mary police are seeking the assistance of the public in identifying the body of a woman which was discovered at Eden Park in Orocobessa Friday morning. Police sources say the discovery was made about 7 o'clock by a farmer walking to his farm. It is reported that the body was found in bushes in blood with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. The farmer raised an alarm and the police responded. The woman's body was removed to the morgue. Investigators say that residents reported hearing loud explosions sometime between Thursday night into Friday morning. The Rockabessa police are appealing to residents with information to come forward. Two men arrested over gun seizures in Westmoreland and St. Andrew. Two men have been arrested over the seizure of two guns in separate incidents in Westmoreland and St. Andrew on Friday. A gun and five rounds of ammunition were recovered during a joint police military operation in Top Geneva District, Grangel in Westmoreland. Reports from the Morgan's Bridge Police saw that about 12.30 p.m., the members of the security forces were in the area when they saw a man standing at a shop. Upon seeing the team, the man reportedly entered the building. According to the police, his actions arose their suspicion and was accosted and searched. The shop was also searched. During the process, one Browning 9mm pistol with a magazine containing five 9mm rounds of ammunition was found in the shop. The man was arrested. The Hunts Bay police made the seizure in St. Andrew during an operation on Maple View Road. Reports saw that about 9.50pm, the police team was in the area when they allegedly saw a man along the roadway acting in a manner that arose their suspicion. The man was accosted, searched, 
and one 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 11 9mm rounds of ammunition was found in his possession. It was taken into custody. The police say further investigations are underway in both cases. Murder Mars Denham Town Zozo Anniversary Even as news of a man being murdered on North Street spread through Denham Town on Wednesday, residents remain adamant that the crime situation would have been worse had a zone of Special Operation Zozo not been declared in the troubled West Kingston community in October 2017. The man, Chad Coleman, was reportedly killed at his home, which is located between two security checkpoints. If it wasn't for the Zozo, I couldn't be out here standing and talk to you right now, one resident said. He was standing outside the community centre, as citizens and several officials gathered to celebrate the five-year milestone. Over the period, Denham Town has seen an increased presence of security forces and more than $450 million invested in social projects as the government moves to transform the crime riddled space. Among the works done are improvements of community infrastructure, such as replacing zinc fences with block and steel fences, creating parks and green spaces, school rehabilitation projects, and providing grants towards micro-enterprises within the community. Moon man is there forever. All of them there and things still are gone. Maybe it would have been worse. but glad for them, a 53-year-old resident said. Katrina Williams, a member of the community's Youth Curfew Monitors Project, said she is more than happy with the impact the Zozo has made on the area. Violence is still here, but not to the extreme as it was before, because before it used to be gang war, meaning buckle and stone and finger all them something there. It's been a while since we have seen stuff like that in the community, she said. Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, who heads the Kingston Western Police Division, said that murders have been steadily declining since the Zozo was implemented in Denham Town in October 2017. Since January, there have been five murders and nine shootings reported in the community, compared to the 13 homicides and 35 shootings over the corresponding period last year. He stressed that the security forces were working assiduously to ensure that gangs would not re-infiltrate the community. Meanwhile, Grand Commander for the Denham Town Zozo, Major Karen Speed, implored residents to get more involved in their social initiatives to maintain the peace. I'm sure some of you have enjoyed seeing the police and soldiers in this space, but it's really not normal. We want your people to be free to move around, to be civil towards each other, to be civil towards the security forces and other communities, he said. They claim that Denham Town has been the best zoos operating in Jamaica. West Kingston Member of Parliament Desmond McKenzie cautioned residents that the security measure which has given a 60-day extension in Parliament on Wednesday, could not go on forever. We must ask ourselves the question, when will Denham Town be able to graduate, to go on its own, to manage its own business without the security on a 24-hour basis? We're not there yet, because there are still areas that we need to work on. But this cannot be indefinite, and I'm urging my constituents to let us be an example, he said. On Wednesday, the Zozos in Norwood and Mount Salem in St. James, Greenwich Town, Parade Gardens and August Town in St. Andrew, and Savlamar in Westmoreland were similarly extended. They were set to expire on October 22. In sports news, D Cup favourites oblige as second round gets underway. East of the Costa Cup favourites, led by champions Gavi Masia High, oblige as the second round of the competition got underway with six games on Friday. Gavi Masia High and last season's beaten finalist, Man in School, scored contrasting wins, while three former winners, Carrington College, Dintil Technical and St. Elizabeth Technical were also winners. The top 32 teams, the top two from each of the 15 zones, and the two best third-place teams advanced to the second round, which will be completed after the two-game series, with the winners and aggregate advancing to the quarterfinals. Garvin Masio High were the top-ranked team in the round, based on ranking points, were easy five of winners over the Carteret College, with Cleo Clark and Chucky Blackstock scoring two goals each, and Jelani Williams scoring the other goal. Manning School were made to work hard for their 3-2 win over Charlie Mount High at Dintil High, leading one love before going behind 2-1, then rallying to beat the team that advanced as a best third-place finisher. Jamalik Porter, Akeem Scarlett and Javin Williams scored for Mannings, while Emery Cummings and Matthew Ellis got the goals for Charlie Mount High. Clarendon College sent a big message as they beat St. Mary Technical 7-1 at Westmoreland Oval, with Christopher Graham leading the way with a brace and Athiba Green, Tayshon Rowe, Okino Jones, Kahim Dixon, and Carlos Cooper are also scoring. Dante Campbell's goal was enough to give Stets a one love win over home technical at Brooks Park. The Intel Technical ran their record for this season to 11 straight wins, with a 4-1 win over Brownstown. But the victory came at a cost, 
as goalkeeper Asha Hutchinson was sent off in the second half at Droxall. Giovanni Affleck scored a hat-trick, Tully Dintel, while Tommy Robinson scored the other goal. In the other game, York cast a blank Seaforth High for love at York Oval. Friday's results, Homewood Technical nil, Stets 1, the Cartridge College nil, Gravy Massio 5, Charlemont 2, Manning 3, Brownstone 1, Dintel 4, St. Mary Technical 1, Clarendon College 7, C4 nil, your castle 4. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.